from the New Constitution, <laughs> Chapter 2, the vocation to our life. God has given us the exceptional grace of our religious vocation. The Father, in fact, has called us to give ourselves to Him. Concern for vocations arises above all from the awareness that we ourselves are living and offering to others a way of life rich in human and gospel values, which while offering genuine service to God and people, fosters personal growth. However, if we wish to give clear testimony to this way of life, we must renew ourselves constantly. Brothers, I think it's providential that I chose this quote from the Constitutions before our meeting with Tom yesterday, reflecting on our awareness of the gospel values in our lives as Capuchins. And an echo of our conversation can be heard again in our constitutions. If we wish to give clear testimony to this way of life, we must renew ourselves constantly. How do we renew ourselves constantly? Where are the places in our lives as Capuchins that we see the need to renew ourselves constantly? Notice in our constitutions there is a strong emphasis, I believe, in the communal aspect of our constant renewal. We have a tendency to create our own agenda when it comes to having a plan to renew ourselves constantly. Someone might say, what we need to do to renew ourselves constantly, perhaps, it is to buy less cereal or less sodas, and then we will renew our way of poverty, for example, or less beer, whatever it is. Another might say, what we need to do to renew ourselves constantly is to report more to our formators so that we renew our vow of obedience constantly. Another might say, we need to invite less young ladies <laughs> so that we can renew our vow of chastity constantly. Wherever it is in on our minds and on our list, we create a list ourselves to renew ourselves by our own efforts. I think uh, Tom's exhortation last night in his last words really hit me. And again, you know, I, I repeat this quote. And I'm not saying this because I want him to change a few things that I have to talk to him about in my visitation. But again, I think these words really speak to our, to our uh, own reality. And he says, I quote, the critique for the better can become the destruction of the good. What does that mean? We can easily deceive ourselves, brothers, with the one critique we have in our chest that we believe so strongly that if only we do that as brothers, we will definitely renew our way of life as Capuchin brothers. And we will solve all the problems of the Capuchin College and even 
of the province of St. Augustine. My sense is that the destruction of the good that Tom talked about yesterday can come out when as soon as we begin to create our own agenda under the name of the critique for the better, we will greatly be discouraged when we find out that our own expectations are not going to be met in its fullness. The message of our constitutions can be interpreted as the following. If we truly desire in our hearts to give a clear testimony to our capuchin way of life, we cannot renew ourselves constantly by our own efforts, by our own agenda, by our own negative criticism. If we do not die to our own agenda and let God finish the good he has started to do in our province, we will fail to renew ourselves constantly. <clears throat> Isn't it this what trust in God means? To stay out of his way so he can do it for us. I'm not saying that we must not speak freely what is in our hearts that can benefit our fraternities to renew our way of life. But ultimately, we need to keep in mind that our criticism for the better is only poison if it is not rooted in our identity before God, our Father. I am your beloved Son, and in me you are well pleased. How hard it is to leave this identity when we struggle to recognize the good God is doing in the present, in our own lives. I am your beloved son. Notice we don't say I am, I rely on my own, but I rely on your fatherly providence. Let us pray these words for each of our brothers too. And let us, praise this, let us pray with these words, especially when we ourselves are struggling with any kind of sin, especially when we have fallen, and immediately after we have fallen to any sin, I will challenge you to pray this before you condemn yourselves, or pray this for a brother, before you condemn the brother. For example, I might be inclined to pray, Patrick is indeed your beloved son, <laughs> and in him you are well pleased. My prayer for all of us, beginning from us as student friars, and even for Tom and his team, is the same that Mother Teresa asked for herself when she will go to a retreat. Lord, grant me the grace to stay out of your way so you can truly finish the good work you have begun in me.